In this example problem, we're going to design a singly reinforced rectangular concrete beam. It'll be simply supported and will have a span length of 24 feet and a distributed load. And in this design, we're given the distributed dead load and distributed live load. And we're, we're told that the distributed dead load includes the self weight. So we're going to start by computing our factored design moment and our, our MN required. Uh, so to, to do this, we'll start by calculating our factored design load, uh, WU. Um, so we're going to use the load combination 1.2 times dead load. So in our case, we have a dead load of 2 kips per foot and 1.6 times our live load. So for us, is 1.0 kip per foot. So we'll get a WU of 4 kips per foot. So we can then plug this into our ultimate moment um, expression. So for a, a, a simply supported beam, the moment at the midspan is WL squared over 8. So for us, our W is 4.0 kip per foot. Our L is 24 feet squared over 8. And this will give us a um, MU of 288 kip feet. So if we take this times 12, we can get kip inches, which we'll use for our design. So 3,456 kip inches. Now we know for our design that we want to design phi MN greater than or equal to MU. Um, we will assume that we're going to be tension controlled. So this means that our phi is going to be equal to 0.9. And I'll try to highlight all of our assumptions as we go. So we can find that we need an MN required equal to MU divided by phi. So for us, 3,456 kip inches divided by 0.9 will give us an MN required of 3,840 kip inches. So this is the value that we'll use in our design moving forward. Uh, our next step is to select a row or a reinforcement ratio for tension controlled behavior. So this means that we're going to select a row between our row min specified by ACI and our row tension controlled, uh, which we um, found an expression for earlier in class. Um, and, and just remember that our row tells us uh, how much reinforcement um, we will use or need in our section. So for this step, we need to make a, a couple assumptions, uh, which you know we'll, we'll also specify for our design. So we'll assume that our concrete strength is 4 KSI, and we'll assume that our yield strength is 60 KSI. So now we need to find our rho min, and we'll use our ACI expressions. Uh, so first, 200 divided by our FY, and then ACI we have um, PSI. And we'll find that uh, the first rho min expression will give us a required reinforcement ratio of 0 0.0033. We can use our second expression and find 4,000 PSI concrete divided by 60,000 PSI yield strength. And we'll get a required reinforcement ratio of 0 0.0032. So we can see that the 0 0.0033 controls, so that'll be our row min. So next, we're going to need to find our row tension control, which will be our upper limit for our reinforcement. And we can find that using the expression that we uh, derived earlier in class. So plugging in our values, we'll have 0.85. Our beta 1 for 4 KSI co concrete is also going to be 0.85. So our, we have 4 KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel, 
and then times 3 eighths will give us our upper limit, our road tension controlled of 0 0.018. Um, so now we have our range. So we have our lower limit, 0 0.0033, and our upper limit, 0 0.018. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, select a row of 0 0.01. And this is what we'll use moving forward. And a 1% reinforcement ratio is uh, usually a, a very good starting point. Um, so we can usually just use this reinforcement ratio. Our next step will be to use our required uh, nominal moment and the uh, nominal moment expression um, for our section strength uh, to determine B and D. Um, so the, we'll need to make several uh, approximations uh, during this step. Uh, the first is we need to approximate um, our lever arm, D minus A over 2, to be equal to 0.9D. Uh, the second modification that we'll make is we'll remember that our AS is equal to rho times BD. So if we plug in these two modifications, we'll have rho b d times f y times 0.9 d. We'll next assume that our d is equal to 1.5 times b, which is a, a good assumption for design. And now we can plug all these values into our M mn expression. So uh, we know we selected a row of 0 0.01 from uh, our previous step. We have B. Our D is equal to 1.5 times B. Our FY is 60 KSI. And then we have 0 0.9 times 1.5 B. So this will give us 1.5. 215 times b to the third. And we'll set this equal to our mn required, uh, which is equal to 3840 kip inches, which we found during our first step. So we can solve for b then and find our b equal to 14.67 inches. So our d then is going to be equal to 1.5 times our 14.67, uh, which will give us 22 inches. And uh, we want to round our B normally to um, the closest 2 inch. So we're going to say that our B equals 14 inches. So these will be our values that we'll use uh, moving on to our next step. Uh, next, we need to use our cover requirements and our approximate bar sizes to compute our um, H, the overall height of the section. And then what we'll do is we'll round our, our B and H to uh, whole inches and recalculate our D to get our actual section shape. So we need to make a, a couple assumptions about our bars. We're going to assume that we have number eight longitudinal bars, and uh, we'll assume that we have number four stirrups and we'll use one and a half inches cover uh, from the outside of the beam to our stirrup, which is uh, at, from ACI. So we can then find our cover based on the D that we found in the previous step, or sorry, find that the height of the section. So our, the height of our section will be 22 inches plus the diameter of our longitudinal bar. So number eight bar has a one inch diameter divided by two. The diameter of our stirrup, which is a half inch, and then the uh, uh, distance of our cover, which is one and a half inches. So we'll get an H here of 24.5 inches. So we'll usually want to round our H and our B to a multiple of two inches. On the previous step, 
we already did this, so we had a, a B equal to 14 inches. Uh, here we'll round our H up to 26 inches. And using our um, ass assumed bar sizes and cover, this will give us a new D of 23.5 inches. So this is designed so you can make other assumptions and you could very well try an H of 24 inches um, for your design. But for our design moving forward, we'll use uh, this B, H, and uh, D. Our next step is to calculate our AS required uh, based on our row. Uh, we'll select our bars, and then after we have this, we can sketch our final section and show all of our dimensions. And if we have to, we can recalculate our D uh, based on our actual bar sizes. So our AS required is equal to our row, which we selected 0 0.01, our, times our B, which we had 14 inches, times our D, which is 20 3.5 inches. This will give us an AS required equal to 3.3 square inches. So we can now take this AS required and compare it to uh, several different options of number of bars and size of bar uh, that we can get from uh, design aids or we can uh, produce these ourselves just based on the standard uh, areas of the bars. Um, so and here are some options. Um, so I, we can use five number sevens or five or six, uh, which would take us between three and 3.6 square inches. Uh, we could use four number eights, which would be um, 3.616, uh, three or four number nines, so between three and four square inches, or uh, three number tens, which would give us 3.81. Um, so for this design, uh, normally we'd want to be um, a, a little over RIS required, but since we don't have anything um, that close, we're going to try moving forward with uh, four number eights. And we'll check our design, and if it doesn't work, we can come back and uh, try another one of these bar combinations. So at this point, we would need to recalculate our D, but since we assumed number eight bars uh, um, in the previous step, we know that our D is going to remain the same uh, at 23.5 inches. Um, so now we can also calculate our, our row, and our row is just going to be our area that we chose, so 3.16, our four number eights, divided by our B, 14 times our D, 23.5. And this will give us our row of 0 0.0096. Um, so we can go back and check and make sure that this row is still within our uh, row min to row tension controlled range, and uh, we would find that we're still within the range, so we're okay. So it's at this point as well that we want to uh, sketch our final section. Um, so I drew our final section here uh, to the lower right. And we can see that we have our four number eight bars, our height of 26 inches, our um, B, our width equal to 14 inches, and the depth of our steel, 23.5 inches. Uh, so now we can move forward and, and check our um, actual design. So in this step, we need to check our cover and spacing requirements. So we need to make sure that the number of bars that we specified can actually fit within the section that we specified. And then we'll also check our final design strength. So the two checks that we need to make, uh, I've, I've written out here, and they're based on the number of uh, things that need to fit in the width B. Uh, so we'll have N bars and uh, N minus one uh, spaces. The space between the bars will be the maximum of the diameter of the longitudinal steel. So in our case, one inch and uh, one inch. So in our case, our spacing between the bars is going to be equal to one inch. Uh, our cover is one and a half inches. 
the diameter of our stirrup we're going to assume is uh, half of an half inch and we'll come back and check this uh, when we do our um, shear design and we also need the diameter of our bend uh, for our stirrups so plugging in uh, our values for our section into the two expressions we'll have 2 times 1.5 inches plus 2 times half of an inch plus 4 times 1 inch plus n minus 1, so 3 times 1 inch will give us a value of 11 inches. So we can plug in our values then for our second expression and we'll have 2 times 1.5 inches cover plus 2 times the diameter of our stirrup plus the diameter of our bend which is 4 times the diameter of our stirrup plus n minus 1 so 3 times the diameter of our bar plus 3 times our spacing and this will give us 12 inches so we can see that both of these checks um, check so we know that we can get our bars in, within our cross section next we're going to check the actual flexural capacity of our section um, so we can first find our beta 1 based on our concrete so our beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85 minus 0 0.05 times our F prime C uh, minus 4 and this will be in units of KSI so we have a 4 KSI concrete so our beta 1 is going to be 0.85 next we can find our C so uh, based on equilibrium we can find our C which will be our AS is 3.16 times our FY is 60 KSI and we know that our 60 KSI will be valid because our row is less than our, our tension controlled row and then we can divide by 0.85 our F prime C is 4 KSI our beta 1 we found 0.85 and our B is 14 inches and we'll find our C then to be equal to 4.7 inches so we'll next find our nominal moment uh, so summing moments about the centroid of our compression block as before so our AS 3.16 times FY 60 KSI which make up uh, the tension force and then our lever arm is D so 23.5 inches minus beta 1 0.85 times C 4.7 divided by 2 um, which is our lever arm uh, which will be MN equal to 4000 Uh, 77 kip inches we can compare this value our MN to our MN required so our MN required we can go back to our, our previous step and see that our MN required equals uh, 3840 and remember that our MN required includes our fee factor so that's how we're factoring here and we'll see that our MN is greater than our than our MN required, so we're okay. So we we uh, check on our uh, our flexural strength. Our last step is to revise the self weight if needed, and uh, recheck the capacity and revise the design as needed. Um, in this example, our self weight was included in a given dead load, um, so we're not going to re revise that. 
Um, so we have our final section. And this is uh, the, the section that um, we designed to uh, satisfy the, the span and loading requirements given uh, at the beginning.